What's up, my friends? Have you ever wondered what all the settings and stuff are on your tools? Like all these little buttons and all the little like knob things that spin. Like what is all of this craziness? So let's break into it. What I have here is a whole set of a bunch of different drills that Milwaukee makes. Now, Milwaukee specifically has two different battery platforms. They've got what's called their M18. You can see the M18 right there. That's a huge brick. This is an 18 volt platform. So it's a higher voltage, a little bit more power. Their motors tend to be a little bit larger as well. And you can just tell like the size of the drills. There's a different motor inside of this one than there is in this one. This is the M12 line. So this is their 12 volt series. So essentially you have the same thing. Like these are both impact drivers. Um, you can see it says impact driver on the sides of both of them, um, but it's just a little bit different voltage. So this one says 18 volts right there. This one says 12 volts right there. Uh, you can see that there's a little bit different RPM settings for each one of them uh, based off of how you're using the tool. Um, you know, if you're, uh, doing something in high speed or low speed, but uh, generally you're gonna get more power, more torque, and overall more use, longevity out of a tool that's an M18 than you are of an M12. So lighter applications I'll use M12 for, especially if I want something lightweight, if I'm just like putting receptacles in and putting switches in and stuff like that, it's faster than using a screwdriver by hand, but you don't have all this bulky, crazy weight. I mean, this, like, this almost seems like it's half the weight as this one, just because of that battery and the bigger motor size. So that's the first thing to decide is like, are you gonna go M18 uh, or are you gonna go M12? You'll notice that the batteries are different. So if you have a charger, uh, some of the, their, the um, chargers that Milwaukee gives with their tools, they'll have a slot for each, so you can charge either one, but you have to keep in mind that you're probably gonna start buying other tools like hacksaws and or hacksaws, sawzalls, um, rotary hammers, all kinds of different things, whole hogs that uh, are gonna use one battery or the other. So just keep in mind, once you start buying some tools, it's kind of good to stick with that battery type so you're not having to buy double the amount of tools and have two different battery options. Unless you're like me and you just like, like every tool and you want all of them. Uh, so I have everything in all sizes, but I'm kind of an exception. So let's talk about actual types of drills and when you would use them. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is really a screwdriver. It's just an electric screwdriver. We call this a screw gun, but basically there is one setting. There's no extra speeds or anything on it. It is just you pull a trigger, you get a speed. I use this thing, it's M12, uh, but I use this just for putting plugs and switches in. That's really it. It's so lightweight. I barely feel this on me at all. I can keep it in my tools and there's no burden to it. Um, and it's quicker than a screwdriver. I can switch out my tips really easily. This thing's got like a quick connect that allows you to just snap in your bits. Um, so it's really nice. This is just an electric screwdriver essentially. And I highly recommend people use this for plugging and switching. Uh, another option um, that's very similar to that. You can tell these are similar styles and sizes, but the big difference with this is this is an impact driver. So as you're drilling with this one, it's slightly hammering a little bit. Um, kind of like an electric torque wrench would, you know, if you're ever like putting on wheels on a car. So it impacts every time it turns as it's twisting. Um, there's a level of extra torque that you get just because of the impact. So both of these are impacts. This is just the M18. This is the M12. So a little bit more power here, a little bit less power here. You'll notice that there's speed settings. So uh, setting one is gonna be really low speed. Setting two is a little bit higher speed and uh, setting three is like really high speed. Um, so just depending on what kind of load you're trying to go through, you can set the settings differently. A lot of times I'll use the setting one if I'm putting in like a device or something, I don't want to break what I'm going through. Um, if I go to three, like it'll overpower some things. It's just too much power. So you can kind of control the torque settings um, while you're drilling. Then the last one you'll see like there's this little screw symbol right there. This one's also got all of them on the top. Uh, we've got speed one, two, and three, and then you get the screw. So if you're actually just drilling something with this, there's a different setting just for that. So that's what all of these are when you're switching the settings. Uh, every drill is gonna have a forward and a reverse. So this little trigger right here will allow the drill to go forward. You always like remember as you're holding it that on the right side, it's forward and on the, the back side, 
is reverse, unless you're a left-handed person, then that's gonna be the opposite, I guess. But righties rule the world. So I always think trigger finger is, uh, is forward and thumb finger for a right-hand person is reverse. Um, I think that pretty much covers it for the impacts. Uh, now let's go to like regular drills. Now both of these, I call them regular drills, but they're hammered or drill drivers. Um, each one of them is like a normal drill. They've got tons of different settings on them. You can have uh, different speeds, um, different allowances. Basically these numbers on the top will allow this drill to, to screw to a certain torque. Um, so basically if I set this at two, the drill will stop drilling and it'll start making that noise where it won't spin anymore because I don't want it to break what I'm trying to drill. The higher the number, the more that that thing's going to try to turn, it'll still break like that at a certain point. So you can always kind of control how the depth at which your screws are going in or how much pressure is actually being applied to something that you're screwing in. Um, so when you're doing anything with like really fine work, I always recommend going down in numbers. If you're going up to something that needs like a lot of power, then you can go up to like a 16 or something like that because it'll still drill like crazy. Like that's hard for me to even get it to break but it'll still do at a certain point. Um, and then the last thing on here, these are this is all for putting screws in. So this whole ring, this is just for putting actual screws into things. If you're actually drilling a hole, there's a completely different setting. So you'll see right here, you've got kind of like a drill bit. Um, if you're gonna be drilling through something, you always wanna set it to the drill bit setting because that's not gonna break at all. It's just gonna power through whatever it is. Um, so anytime you're drilling holes, if you're drilling holes through metal, through wood, anything where you have a drill bit or like a paddle bit or something like that, always keep it on the drill setting. You're probably going to use that more than anything else, especially if you have these smaller drills that you're using as your screw gun. Then the last setting that these bigger ones have is a hammer setting. You can see they both have that hammer on it. This is a hammer drill. So if you're drilling through masonry, like stone or brick or tile or just like directly down into concrete, you need something that's going to hammer while it's drilling. So this thing will buzz and be like and it's actually hammering down while it's rotating. Now, a lot of times it depends on what you're going into. Like you're only going to use a, a small hammer drill like this up to a certain like depth and a certain size usually like quarter inch sleeve anchors and small little things like that, tap ponds. I'll use a hammer drill like this for. Um, if it's very, very hard masonry and you're drilling really large holes, then I'm gonna use something like a rotary hammer. Rotary hammers are specifically only hammer drills. There's no other feature. They're usually bigger motors. You know, they, they're like set up specifically a lot higher RPM, so they, they spin a lot faster. But you're gonna use a rotary hammer for like really heavy duty kind of stuff, but this allows you for lighter jobs if you're mounting conduit to a brick wall or putting a panel up or something like that, where it's kind of it's kind of like easy masonry to get through, then having one of these is awesome. Um, you just gotta make sure that you get something that will fit inside of this drive, inside of this chuck. So. Um, a lot of the rotary hammers, they have what's called an SDS or an SDS plus where it's this crazy weird end that fits in. Don't try to put those kind of bits into these. Some people do, but if you don't get it like perfectly in there, it's going to sit and wobble. So you're going to end up with a bigger hole than you want it to. Um, so just buy things that are either quarter inch, you know, three eighths drive, stuff like that. You'll notice that the tip cones out and cones in. That's for grabbing different size drill bits. So if you have a quarter inch bit that you're putting in, you're gonna hang onto this ring and you're gonna put it in either forward or reverse, just depending on if you're trying to open it or close it. So if you're going in forward, it's gonna cone out like that, meaning it's gonna grab onto the bit. If you flip it into reverse and hold onto this thing, it's gonna open up for a larger size bit. And once you get a bit in there, you just make sure that it's all the way on and you twist it until you hear those clicks, you hear that little, that means that it's locked in place on that bit. So this M12 is the same thing. It's just a smaller version, different battery platform, essentially the exact same tool though. Um, but same thing applies. Wait till you get that thing and then click it a little bit and that'll hold your bit in. And if you don't do the clicky thing, like I just showed you, where you give it a little bit of extra clicks at the end, you'll notice your bits are gonna start falling out of the, the, the tip. So if you ever drilling through something and the bit starts getting wobbly and just falls out, it's because you didn't lock it in place with those clicks. Um, then the last thing to mention on the actual drills themselves, is you notice 
there's a two and a one. So each one of these has a, a one speed. This is a low speed with very high torque. So if you're drilling through something at one and you're not holding on to this drill, this thing will rip out of your hand because there's so much torque, but it's at a lower speed. So sometimes if you're drilling through like four or five studs, you, you need to go at low speed because that bit is trying to chew through so much wood that the motor's gonna bog down. You'll end up heating the battery and overheating the motor. But if you go at a lower speed, it's higher torque. So it saves the battery and saves the motor. And it's actually drilling based off the load that you're putting on the tool rather than just trying to like bang through a bunch of stuff. So I usually do setting two for everything that I do. But when I'm drilling through really, really thick stuff, I kick it down into one and then I put less stress on the tool and it's easier to get through the material as well. One problem when you're drilling, a lot of people don't use these handles, which by the way, for, for being, you know, people that drill holes all day long every day, use the handle. Seriously, when you're drilling through stuff, you get knocked in the head all the time. Like how many of you have been drilling and you put it down in one, so you got that low speed, but really high torque and you're drilling through something and wow, it either whaps you in the face or it spins out of your hand or it smashes into a wall or something. You use the handle, you have two hands on it. That's what it's for. I know a lot of people just throw these things away, but honestly, if you're, especially if you're drilling in low speed, just pull this thing out, twist it, comes right off. Boom, goes right back on, super easy. But this tool actually has a functionality in it that can stop over rotation now. So they've designed this so that there's basically a sweet spot that once it detects that it's going to have an over rotation like that, it shuts off so it doesn't allow it to happen. So I think that's an actually like really cool feature. Um, Milwaukee's always doing something to like change the game and, and like address problems that we have. But dude, I can't tell you how many times I've like, hurt my wrist because of that. And I know it's coming, right? Like I'm always sitting here holding, I'm like drilling and like holding down as this thing's trying to pull up. Uh, that's when I figured out this thing. But even with one of these things, dude, sometimes you just catch a knot or you're drilling through like a four by four, you got a hole saw in or something that's just a lot of surface area when you're cutting and then whoa! And you can see there's this little uh, button on the top that says auto stop with a little stop side, uh, stop sign light on it. Now, you're not gonna get that thing to come on, but if you simulate, you can see that thing starts blinking at you if you try to like simulate, you know, an over rotation from like picking up a load too much, it'll come on. So it immediately stops and it won't let it drill anymore. Now you might be thinking that I'm just like letting off the trigger to make it look cool, but literally once this thing goes on, it stops, my finger's still pulled down, I never pulled off, it's auto stopping that load. So it's gonna detect when like, oh crap, Dustin's gonna hurt himself and then just shuts off. So I think that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. All of the batteries on the M18 series, this is what I love about them, you push this little button on the battery and it shows you a fuel gauge for how full that battery is. So once you only get down to one bar, you know you need to recharge your batteries. Uh, the M12 line does not have that on the actual batteries, but it does on the side of the tool. So as you're using the tool, once you pull the trigger, it'll show you how much battery life that you have. Um, they just don't have any room to put that on here. Most drills nowadays even come with flashlights on them. So um, they only engage once you pull the flashlights down here on this one. Uh, once you pull the trigger, you don't even have to pull it all the way. But if you ever like in an attic or something, and you don't have a flashlight, you can just bring one of these and go, and point it around the room and it gives you a little bit of light. So that's pretty much your drills. There's a whole bunch of other drills that you could get. Um, like I said, rotary hammers, there's whole hogs, right angle drills. There's all kinds of different things um, that are different types of drills. But for the most part, I think having, when you start out as an apprentice, having a hammer drill, or a full you know, drill that has hammer capability and an impact driver are like the number two. And if you don't really want to get the impact driver, I still recommend getting a secondary drill that's more lightweight. So I would probably recommend that you get a screw gun. If these are the only two drills that you can get, then dude, you're going to be set for like most of the work that you do every single day in this trade. So hope that helped. Thank you guys for your time. Talk to you later.